नमस्कार टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू समथिंग अबाउट द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ बुक फ्लमिंगो द चैप्टर इज द लॉस स्प्रिंग रिटन बाय अनीस चंग नाउ आई टेल समथिंग अबाउट द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द स्टोरी एंड समथिंग अबाउट अनीस जंग द स्टोरी लॉस स्प्रिंग रिटन बाय अनीस जंग रिवॉल्व अराउंड द पीटीएबल कंडीशन ऑफ द पुअर पीपल हु आर फोर्स्ड टू लिव इन स्लम्स and work hard in very dirty conditions the story is divided into two parts the first part tells the writer's impressions about the life of poor rag pickers who have migrated from bangladesh but are now settled in india delhi simapuri the second part narrates the miserable life of the bangal makers in the town of firozabad the story talks about the miserable life of the two children whose spring which is synonymous to childhood here is lost in misery and poverty now children when you read the title the lost spring you must have so many ideas in your mind spring which is lost now what is this word spring basically signifies spring signifies happiness joy blooming flowers and happiness everywhere joy gaiety but this joy this prosperity this gaiety this happiness when it is not there it is lost from the life then it is lost spring and for these children these rag pickers of simapuri and the bangal makers of firozabad the spring is far far away because it is lost they do not get the opportunity to have the joys of life they are destitute and living a life of poverty and in living in dirty pitiable situations now i'll tell you something about the chapter now sahib one of a migrant family from dhaka is a rag picker who lives in simapuri now where is simapuri puri it is at the periphery of delhi when you move inside delhi when you move from say uh, gazibad towards delhi the outer part you know the boundary side that is called simapuri and goes about barefoot rummaging around in the heaps of garbage to earn earn his livelihood for the children like sahib heap of garbage is like a gold mine now children you must be wondering why gold mine what is the relation between garbage and gold mine children this garbage is the only source of earning a livelihood for these children so this serves as goal to them secondly sometimes these children by chance they get some valuable things suppose a 10 rupee note in the heap of garbage and that becomes a matter of surprise for them and it serves as gold for their lives they live their lives by selling this garbage thousands of such children live with their families in simapuri they live in a slum with not even the basic amenities such as water and sanitation available to them these families are living in utter poverty the children have nothing else to do except rag picking through which they earn something to eat at least the children have nothing else to do because they never went to school schooling for them is a long long away aim a distant dream which is not to be fulfilled ever because there is no one to take care of them their life is just a vicious circle of rag picking poverty dirt dirty conditions and slums now garbage with the elders is the mean means of survival but for these children it is a magical wonder in order to earn butter sahib works daily works day and night and it is very difficult for him to make two ends meet but after some time sahib thought of doing something else and he started working in a tea stall where he is paid where he is paid rupees 800 per month but it seems he after this has lost his freedom his carefreeness he worked for someone else and is no longer his own master this loss of identity weighs heavily 
on his tender shoulders. Now, Anis Jung, once, first of all, she's talking about Seema Puri, the migrants from Bangladesh, their pitiable situation. And then, in the second part of the story, she talks about Mukesh's family. She talks about Mukesh, who is now Anis Jung, in the second part of the story, he talks about Mukesh, who belongs to the family of bangle makers, but he's a very dreamy child. He has a lot of dreams. He wants to be his own master. And uh, the most important thing is, he doesn't want to enter into the same business of bangle making. And what we notice in the story is that these poor people who are engaged in the business of bangle making are exposed to very high temperature because they're having furnaces in their own houses. And even small children, they just try to imitate their own parents and they also learn this art of making bangles. They never go to school, they're not, not exposed to the outer world. And the most important part, which is being emphasized by Anis Jung in the story is that due to illiteracy, these people, they're exploited by politicians, bureaucrats, policemen, middlemen and the sahukars. Whatever they are producing, the beautiful bangles, they are sold at a very high price in malls, in very big shops, but over here they are not paid properly for what they are producing. So this boy Mukesh, he wants to become a, become a motor mechanic. He has a dream. He is having a lot of courage to dream while he is living in Firozabad. In the story, the author brings out the depravity of child labor. In fact, the childhood is considered as spring of human life and should be full of joy pleasure and play. But ironically, millions of children like Sahil and Mukesh have lost their spring, that is childhood, by getting engaged in making a living. This is the chapter.